What's going on, guys? It's Jesse Stokes here with the Abide Podcast. This purpose of this podcast is to abide in Christ and to teach others to abide in Christ through preaching the gospel and making disciples. In this podcast, we're going to cover two ways to study scripture. Number one is the SOAP method, and number two is the acronym acronym READ, R-E-A-D, SOAP S-O-A-P, and read R-E-A-D. So first, why is it important to have a method to study Scripture? Um, I think it's important to have a method to study Scripture because, like anything else, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail, right? If you don't have a way to dissect the Bible, um, sometimes we can get off track and off course and look at it as a whole and be overwhelmed. How do I handle this? What do I do? Kind of, uh, I just heard this statement today when I was listening to another podcast. It says, um, the man who wants to move a massive mountain starts by taking out small rocks. And uh, I've also heard this quote, many small chops take down a big tree. So <clears throat> the principle is this, that, that sometimes the Bible can be overwhelming. It, it can look like a big task to understand um, the words of the page. But if we break it down into simple steps, it can make it easier for us to comprehend, understand. And that's how the Holy Spirit works through when we understand what we read. That's when the Holy Spirit can enlighten us and empower us and change us and transform us through his word. The main way we change is through the study of the word. You see in Ephesians 1, it, Paul prays a prayer and he asks God to give him a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of our hearts enlightened so that we may know what is the hope to which he has called us. And that's my prayer that Lord, you would give us every time we read the word, a spirit of wisdom and revelation that we wouldn't just get used to it, that we wouldn't just become habitually reading without asking your Holy Spirit to speak. So I'm going to share a few scriptures on why studying the Bible is important. The first one is 2 Timothy 2.15. It says this, Study <coughs> study to show thyself approved, a worker not needing to be ashamed rightfully dividing the word of truth. So this is 2 Timothy 2.15 where Paul is telling Timothy to study. It doesn't say read. It doesn't say um, just read the Bible. It says study the Bible to show yourself to prove to God so that you don't need to be ashamed. How many of us, when we try to talk about God, when we think about God, we're ashamed because we don't understand the precepts and principles in God's word. We don't have a confidence in knowing it. And it says, once we study to show ourselves approved, we're not needing to be ashamed and we can rightfully divide the word of truth. We can know truth from error. We can have discernment from the Old Testament to the New Testament to how things line up, but it comes through the word study. The word study literally means to sniff out or to search out like a bloodhound would search out um pray. We need to have that same approach when it comes to the, the word of God. Hebrews 4 says the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. You see, God's word is living and active. It's powerful. Um, 2 Timothy 3, 16 says all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for our maturity. And as we study it, we're going to be perfect and complete, ready for every good work. John 17, 17 says, God's word is truth. Jesus says, sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. John 5 says this, you search the scriptures because in them you think you have life, but they testify of me. What Jesus means in John 5 is that the scriptures are the number one way, the number one means which God testifies of Christ. The way we know Christ and understand Christ and have fellowship with Christ is chiefly through his word and through his Holy Spirit in his word. So <clears throat> here is the first method to study. I shared those scriptures with you because I want you to know that the Bible 
has a high emphasis on the importance of understanding and reading the Bible. So the first one is the SOAP method. SOAP is an acronym for each letter standing for something. Scripture, observation, application, and prayer. Scripture, observation, application, and prayer. S-O-A-P. S stands for scripture. As we study the Bible, it's important to write out the scripture in a notepad or make sure we read the scripture over and over again if we don't have the opportunity to write it down. Read the scripture. Just read it. Write it down. Get it in your head. Meditate on it. Look at it over and over again. Just get yourself familiar with the scripture that you're about to study. Put the text before you. Maybe that's a passage. Maybe that's a verse. Maybe it's um, a chapter. But get the scripture before you. The second letter is O. This letter stands for observe. This is where you're going to write in a notebook or on a piece of paper. You're just going to write down as many observations as come to mind. This isn't something where you really think super deeply. I mean, it it can be, but this is where you want to just write the first thing that comes to your mind. Just You want to just keep on having as many observations as you can, as many little insights you see. It can be significant. It can seem insignificant, but all of it matters. So write down your observations. For example, when I study scripture, I like to write down if a word is repeated multiple times, if a phrase um, lines up with another phrase, if there's key words, if there's verbs, if there's um, contrast, comparison, um, things like that. Whatever you observe, observe the, the tone, the mood, the setting. Ask the questions who, where, why, what, and how. These are things we observe about the text. We want to write down all of our observations because they all matter. A stands for apply. This is where we apply the text to our lives. We look at it and we look in context as we read it and we ask this question, how does this apply to my life? How does this actually change the way I live? And it's important to to kind of write down, I think, multiple applications and then choose the one that you think applies to you the most. This is what I just did as I've been in 1 Thessalonians. I wrote down three application questions based on the verses I was studying. And I chose the one that was most applicable to me to really apply um, to my life. Because it's important to not just read the Bible, but apply the Bible to your life. How does this change you? How does this transform you? And the P stands for prayer. Every time we finish reading the Bible... And before we read the Bible and while we're reading the Bible, we should be in prayer, asking God to move in our hearts and the Holy Spirit to give us understanding, give us transformation through his word. So S is scripture, O is observation, A is application, and P is prayer. This is the method that I use um, most often. There's another method, another acronym called READ. This is also very similar, but um, just a different way of putting things. So read stands for R is read, E is examine, A is apply, and D is diligence. R is read, E is examine, A is apply, and D is diligence. First is read. We want to make sure we read the text. Read it over and over again. Read it. Just have it before us. Very similar to the S in SOAP. E is examine. This is where we examine it. We look over it. We um, we just see, search for the context, deeper meaning, um, and we just examine deeper. We meditate on it, and we um, would search Greek words here. We would um, get a commentary. We would um, write down observations. We would just take a deeper look into that text. A is apply. We'd want to apply this. Similar to the A in SOAP, we want to apply this, write down applications. And D is diligence. Now, this is important because D stands for diligence. If we want to study the Bible, we need to constantly remind ourselves that this takes diligence. We need to be diligent in the things of God. We can't just read every once in a while or just when we feel like it. No, we have to be diligent in our discipline and in our study of Scripture. And the D of diligence reminds us that There's a pattern. There is a habit that we need to form. There is a consistency we must have in God's word. 
And yes, God's grace is over 